Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. I'm excited to share that I am a guest designer for Pink and Maine for their March 2024 release and I cannot believe all of the goodies that they sent me from this release. I feel so beyond blessed to have so many fun things. I have some foilables, which are toner papers that you can use with the Pink and Main Mini Mink Machine or your laminator to add foil to these designs. They sent me more flat bat sequins than I will ever know what to do with. <laughs> I have all the colors and I'm so excited about them. I am going to use a few in today's video in a shaker card, but they are perfect for decorating. I just can't believe how many beautiful, beautiful colors there are that they sent me. I also received a couple samples of a few new toner foils um, or transfer foils. So they're called cheer foil and I have sparkle gold and Caribbean. I also have one of their new tools, which is called the pick up and place tool. And I also a pack of little mini bottles that you can use for adhesive and they have so many great stamp sets. I absolutely love these cupcake and mug stamp sets. I'm going to use one of them on today's video. I have this beautiful color ink spot paper pad. It looks like alcohol inks, but of course they're already done and pretty. <laughs> Lots of shaker covers in all different sizes to make shaker cards and then more stamp sets <laughs> and dies. I think these little bears and bunnies are so stinking cute. Look at these little mice with all of these fun birthday party themes. I really love that their die set for these tiny little dice has like a little tab on there. I lose those little dice so easily, so I'm excited to have that be easier to use. There is a emboss and cut folder and I've never tried one of these, so I'm really excited to test that out. I love a good scripty sentiment, especially when there's a coordinating die and just look how cute this set is with all those beautiful flowers. They also sent some basics like these uh, frames and circles. They cut out a bunch of different sizes at once and then more uh, transfer stickies that are, I believe, foilable. I have to test and play with them. I haven't used those before. So let's talk about what I'm going to be using today for today's project. I have the adorable berry cupcake stamp and its coordinating die. I pulled out a few confetti, but I'm only going to use three of them. I'm going to use ruby slippers, eggnog, and salmon. I'm going to use this celebrate sentiment from the birthday sentiment foil ups cut ups. And I'm also going to be foiling it with the sparkle gold foil. So like I said, they just gave me a couple of samples to play with. So I'm going to use this adorable star sparkly uh, foil for my celebrate. And then it was really hard <laughs> trying to figure out which pattern paper I wanted to use. I settled on one that had a lot of pink and yellow because I wanted to color my berry cupcake like a lemon raspberry cupcake. So I wanted to make sure that pink and uh, yellow were like the main colors. And then I'm also going to use the Let's Celebrate stamp set and coordinating dies to add more onto my sentiment for this card. Okay, I'm gonna get myself a little bit more organized here. I've got a lot of fun things on my table. So let's start with foiling. I'm gonna take this Celebrate Sentiment. It's already cut out, which is really nice. I will end up trimming it down just a little bit later so it fits where I want it to fit better, but I love that it's already cut out. It makes sentiment so easy breezy. I've started warming up my laminator and I have a carrier sheet that I like to use when I'm foiling with my laminator and I'm taking a Swiffer cloth trying to make sure I don't have any dust or any type of residue on my sentiment or on the back of my foil. I'm trying to channel my inner uh, Lisa from this calls from confetti and all of her tips for foiling. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through my laminator and let's see how well I did. I love this foil. I love the stars and the gold, like the yellow gold look of it. It's so pretty and it foiled onto my foilable just perfect. I think it turned out so pretty. I don't see any black little speckles or dots, so I'm really happy and really proud. So I'll go ahead and set that aside and turn off my laminator so it will cool down. 
I'm going to move on to stamping my image and doing some alcohol marker coloring. So I'm going to grab my Misty and a piece of white cardstock that is alcohol marker friendly. And I'm going to stamp my berry cupcake with an alcohol marker friendly black ink. I use lots of different kinds, but today I'm using Ink on 3's Blackout Hybrid Detail Ink. So I'll go ahead and get my cupcake set up in my Misty. I did give it a little bit of a wipe and... Um, before I used it to make sure any uh, residue was wiped off so it hopefully will get a nice clean stamp. So I went ahead and stamped it a couple times and it didn't give like the most perfect stamp. I really need to get a re-inker for this one but I'm going to show you what you can do after you're done coloring if you don't like the amount of ink or like you want it to be a more bold stamp look. I hope that makes sense. So I'm using my Olo alcohol markers and for my raspberry, I'm gonna be using RVs. So I'm using 0.6 as the darkest color. For my mid-tone, I'm bringing in 0.4 and normally for the small of a raspberry, these two images, I wouldn't bring in a third color, but I did bring in RV 0.1 because I wanted them to have a really pinky raspberry look. For the green, I'm going to use my BG 2.4 and 2.3 for my leaves, as well as my cupcake liner. I'll bring those back later. And I picked those colors because I thought they went with the kind of tealishy color that's on my pattern paper. Now I know when I trim it down, the focus is going to be the pink and yellow, but I thought I'd bring in some of that teal just in case it came through. And I thought it matched the pink and yellow really well. For the yellow lemony frosting that I'm putting on my cupcake, I'm using Y1.2 and Y1.1. So you can see how I'm adding the darkest color and I'm going to do that for all of the frosting, just kind of adding the darker color at the ends of my little frosting swirls and then using the lighter color to completely color in that frosting. Again, really trying to get that lemony yellow look. For the cupcake itself, I'm going to bring back my RVs and I'm not going to go as deep this time. I want to use a the mid and lighter colors. So I'm using RV 0.2 and RV 0.1 to color in the cupcake part. And what I like about this stamp set too is that there are already some shadows. You can see the little tiny lines in the design. So underneath the raspberries, underneath the frosting and where the cupcake liner is and that just helps as a colorist or as I'm coloring, I don't consider myself an amazing colorist, but as I'm coloring, I can use that as a guide of where I need to add my shadows. So now as I'm moving on to my cupcake liner, it's the same color combination as my leaves. I will bring in one more lighter color, but I'm using BG 2.4 to be the darkest color. And I wanted to show that I added some deeper or longer lines on my cupcake to give it that kind of rounded cupcake liner look. And then I brought in BG 2.3 to be the midtone. And said, since this is such a large part of the image, I brought in BG 2.1 as a lighter color to completely fill in the rest of the cupcake liner. I go back and forth a couple times, really trying to get a nice clean blend, but also still have that depth that I created with the darkest color to give the cupcake liner a little bit more of a kind of scallop look, if that makes sense. And then I'm bringing back in the yellow, same colors as I did for my frosting to color in the bow. I just wanted a little bit more yellow since my cupcake is pink. Now that my coloring is done, I'll go ahead and show you that you can darken up the lines because I didn't take my cupcake out of my Misty. It's still in my Misty. So I'm putting my paper right back in the same spot. And this time I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black, which is not an alcohol marker friendly black ink. And I'm just stamping right back on top again and using a pressure tool to help me get a nice, clean, and much more crisp black outline. I like to do that too when I want to use a color that is not black. So I'll use a really pale gray or a really pale brown to stamp in color. And then I can bring in a VersaFine to outline the image. 
I used the coordinating die to cut it out and now I'm going to figure out how I'm gonna add my celebrate to my cupcake liner I wanted it to blend in so I'm grabbing some distress ink and salvage patina and just a blending brush and I have a mat here to do my ink blending since it's a tiny little piece of paper this grit mat it's kind of it's sticky but it's not sticky helps keep that small little piece of paper in place while I ink blend my sentiment was also a little too big for how I was going to place it onto my liner so while it is cut out I'm going above and beyond and fussy cutting out my sentiment a little bit more you absolutely don't need to do that if you're recruiting this card um, but I just wanted it to fit a little bit better inside my liner and not cover any of my stamped image so like the little shadow lines or the bow so that is now ready. I did use a little bit of or the corner of my cloth just to wipe off if there's any ink on top of my foil. We're gonna move on to assembling the shaker. So I'm using my shaker panel. I'm using the smaller one, the A2 small shaker cover, which measures three and three quarters by five inches. This pack comes with a pack of 10. That's so many in one pack. It's so cool. It makes shaker card, that infinity shaker card look so super easy. So I'm going to use that as a guide of where I want to trim my pattern paper. So I already trimmed it to five inches and now I'm lining it up, trying to do my best to kind of guesstimate where I want to trim it down to that 3.75 inches. So you can see I'm just using the ruler on my paper trimmer to get that to the size of the shaker panel that I need it to be. You can see there's a little bit of teal on my card, but I did focus mostly on that pink and yellow. I guess it's kind of orangey, but pink and yellowy orange uh, pattern on my paper. I'm using the new tool, the pick up and place tool. I'm using the little pokey part to help get the um, protective cover of the shaker panel off. And I'm gonna go ahead and really start pressing and scoring or folding over all four of the tabs that have adhesive. I love these shaker panels. It really makes making shaker, infinity shakers so easy. So I use the scoring tool to really reinforce those score lines, make sure that they are bending well. And then I open it back up and I'm starting with just adding three of the adhesive flaps to the back. So I'm creating my shaker panel and I'm only doing three sides. So I did the two longer sides and one on the bottom. So now I can, it's a little pocket. So now I can add in my sequins. Like I said, I ended up just using salmon, eggnog, and ruby slippers. So ruby slippers is a little bit darker and I thought it matched the color coloring of my raspberries really well, while eggnog and salmon confetti really brought in the straw or raspberry lemon cupcake look. Also, there's a hole <laughs> in my shaker container. I totally didn't think that through and dumped a bunch of confetti everywhere, but I got smarter on the next two. I turned it so that way it came out of the edge or like the corner of my little packet rather than, you know, the giant hole. So I'm shaking it up. I'm liking the combination. I don't think there's too much or too little of a color. So we'll move on to adding my shaker panel to my card base and well, closing it up and then adding it to my card base. So I'm giving it a little shake, trying to get it as flat as possible. And I noticed that I probably should have trimmed my paper down a little bit smaller than 3.75 by 5 inches. So if you're using these panels, I would go a little little smaller than the size of the panel. So I'm just gonna bring my scissors in and I'm just trimming off a tiny little strip. It's probably not straight, but it's so tiny you can't tell. And that will just help me close up my panel a little easier. So I peeled off the release paper for that last tab and I'll go ahead and close it, making sure it's nice and sealed. Again, this is the A2 small shaker cover from Pink and Main. So great, I love it. And I'm gonna add it to my top folding white card base that's a two in size so four and a quarter by five and a half when folded i'm going to grab some double-sided adhesive this is one inch from scrapbook.com and i'm going to add three strips of this adhesive across the back um, longwise or i guess vertical and then i'm going to add two horizontally so on the top and bottom of the back side of the panel i just really want to make sure this shaker stays on my card base I probably went a little crazy with the adhesive, but I'd rather have too much glue than too little. 
<laughs> and I went ahead and pressed that onto my card base right in the center. I love that little white border peeking out from that incredibly colorful shaker panel. Now I know that I want my cupcake and my celebrate sentiment to go onto my panel, but I wanted to add one of these really adorable scripty sentiments from Let's Celebrate. At first I was thinking of doing happy birthday, but I just felt like that sentiment would have just been really big and kind of take away from the cupcake and take away from the pretty background. I didn't want to block any more of the panel than I already am. So I'm going to use Wish Big. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my stamp. I already have the coordinating die out. I'm going to grab a pink ink. I'm going to use Versafine Clear again. I love my Versafines. And I'm using Glamorous, which I thought would match the raspberries pretty well and I'm going to stamp it on some white scrap paper and I will run that through my die cut machine with a coordinating die once the ink has a little little second to dry. I'm also going to die cut it again uh, or the the die cut again out of just some plain white cardstock because this white cardstock is a little thin so I wanted to double up just to give it a little bit more sturdiness if that makes sense. Um, I just didn't want it to be too flimsy on the card. So I'm going to use my liquid adhesive gun here to add liquid adhesive to the back side of my stamped sentiment die cut and I'll add that plain white one on the back just lining it up and um, I love using liquid glue for things like this because well one it's so tiny but two it gives me that wiggle room to be able to make sure everything is lined up perfectly. And that way it's a little more sturdy so I can add some foam adhesive behind it. But first let's get our cupcake in place. I'm using some thinner foam squares. These are the one millimeter thick from scrapbook.com. And I'm going to use my wish big so I can kind of get an idea of where my cupcake should go. I'm using my gird mat and I know I want it to be a little higher but still centered. So the wish big can go under my cupcake and it all feels and looks balanced. So I use some one millimeter thick uh, foam adhesive behind the wish big as well. I did realize I need to remove it from behind the little swirls of the H and the B. So I'll go ahead and just trim those off, but they won't go to waste. I'll add them behind my foiled celebrate sentiment. So I'm getting my wish big put onto the card and then I will get my celebrate added and that will really finish off the overall look of the card, but I will want to add some highlights. So I'm going to grab a white gel pen and I'm going to add a few highlights to the images. Oh, here I am adding some liquid adhesive behind that H and B so it sticks to the cupcake. I forgot I did that. I wanted to make sure that there weren't any snagging points on my card when, I, when it gets put into an envelope. So now I'm going to add those white highlights with a Jelly Roll size 10 pen. I just add it everywhere from the raspberry to the frosting to the bow to the cupcake liner, just wherever I think some white highlights would look nice. Here's a close-up look at my Celebrate Wish Big Cupcake, my first project for Pink and Main guest designing this month. Here's one more look at it as well, but I'm going to have a link down below to my Instagram post because there is an Instagram hop today celebrating Pink and Main's 10th year birthday. That's amazing. I'm so excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited to bring you more inspiration this month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.